These are Artica Skyshade Smart LED Light Panels. And these are an absolute steal at just £60 from Costco here in the UK. So much so that I bought three of them for my upstairs hallway lighting revamp. There's just one little problem with them. Despite being smart, which in this case means RGB, WW, and Wi-Fi controlled, these commit the cardinal sin of needing to be connected to the internet to be remotely controlled, even via Home Assistant. And how many times do I have to tell you? Don't connect your damn light bulbs to the damn internet! Now luckily, the chip that runs this whole thing is a standard Toya module, a BK7231N, which with a quick firmware flash can be fully open source controlled. And yes, no longer needing the damn internet to turn your bloody lights on. Oh, and before we get too far into this, I want to thank Aragat from the Electroda Forum, as it's their guide I followed to get this done. It's an excellent resource if you want to do this yourself, and it's one that I will link in the description. Right, let's get into it. The light itself works pretty well out of the box, and each light comes with its own IR remote that lets you control the RGB, cool white, and warm white LEDs without connecting it to Wi-Fi at all. If that's all you want to do with it, then congrats, mount the buggers and enjoy. Should you want the smart control though, well, keep watching. The light itself just has live, neutral and earth sort of connectors, like uh, Vago style lever connectors, uh, connector blocks, which makes it really easy to install and just overall it is a fairly easy installation. To flash the little board in here though, we do need to get inside the light, which luckily is just a whole bunch of Phillips head self-tapping screws. Once all of those screws are out, including the little power supply cover and the two rails with the safety straps, well, you can then lift the sort of main panel out from the outer housing and diffuser and flip it over. In there, you'll find the three rows of LEDs in groups of three themselves, with the middle being the RGB LED and the flanking two being the cool white and warm white LEDs. That's why there's so much brightness difference between RGB and the just standard whites, especially with RGB WW strips. Kind of like this one. Anyway, the, in the, the middle sort of, well, in the midsection, you find a tiny little PCB with the IR receiver and our Wi-Fi module. This is actually a sort of ESP style microcontroller that sends five PWM signals to the power supply to control the LEDs, along with running the Wi-Fi control and IR. Now, we do need to solder some leads here. Power and ground on the bottom edge, TX and RX for UART on the right hand side, and then uh, the enable pin to up from RX. Technically, you don't need that one, as you can just reset the board by pulling 3.3 volts of ground, but I opted for it anyway. You'll also need a USB to UR adapter. I'm using a CP2102 board here, which makes it nice and easy. With the wire soldered, and make sure to be careful not to short 3.3 in ground as that will kill the board, ask me how I know, you can hook them up to the CP2102 headers, remembering to flip TX and RX, and connect it to your PC. With the BK7231 Easy UART Flasher software, I'll link in the description too, download the N underscore QIO version of the firmware, uh, set the baud rate to uh, 115,200, and then hit Do Firmware Backup Read Only. It might ask you to reset the chip with CEN, if so, reboot it, uh, and then it should read the current firmware. If all goes well, hit Do Firmware Write No Backup, and let it do its thing. Assuming that all went well, now you're on to the next step. Once the board resets, which you might have to do yourself via CEN or pulling power or ground, uh, it'll create a Wi-Fi hotspot called Open Beckon with a bunch of letters and numbers. Connect to it so that you can run through the setup process, which is at 192.168.4.1. Head to the flags page and enable flag 0, 1, 8, 10, 12, 16, 22, and 28, and then head to the configure module page and set P6 to PWM3, P7 to PWM2, P8 to PWM5, P23 to IR receive, P24 to PWM underscore N4, and P26 to PWM1. Then head to the Wi-Fi page and connect it to your network. 
Once it connects, you'll need to reconnect with your new local IP address to set up MQTT for Home Assistant and also enable Home Assistant Discovery. Hash should find it automatically, assuming you have the Mosquito MQTT broker installed and set up, which is great. Should you want the IR remote to still work, you will need to hit the Launch Web Application button, click File System, create a file called autoexec.bad, and then paste in the event or add event handler two codes from ErrorGaps post and save it. Reboot the device, and that should make the remote work. Then you can desolder all of the wires and mount the bugger to your ceiling. If you don't have terrible 19th century ceilings, it should be pretty easy. Just six mounting screws and plugs and one central hole for the wiring, and then hang it by its safety straps and then hook it in. In my case, this process took me basically a day. Fun times. Anyway, wiring it in is really easy, although it's worth noting that this thing works best if it has permanent power to it and you just control the light directly rather than switching power off like a normal light bulb. I've wired this up with a Sonoff Zigbee relay so that I can control both power to the light and if the decouple mode actually worked, I can still use the regular light switches to control the light itself without turning power off. These Sonoff Mini R2 Extreme Relays are a bit bugged when it comes to the decoupled mode, at least through ZHA. With C2M or Zigbee to MQTT, I believe it works fine, but I don't really want to replace ZHA with Z2M, as repairing all the devices would suck, so I'm gonna have to work around it, at least for the time being. Anyway, the light works, and it's beautifully bright, and I'm really looking forward to getting the other two uh, panels up, uh, and, you know, my uh, sort of lighting up my otherwise dim hallway. We're doing lots of renovations, and new ceilings is one of them, so I'm waiting for that before fitting the other two. Don't ask why I did the hardest one first, though, over the stairs, having to build a platform to get over... Don't ask. Uh, these lights are great. At £60, they are exceptional value for what you get. And with the open source firmware on board, they are a great choice for your smart lighting. I would prefer Zigbee, obviously, but I will settle for this. Obviously, this has been a bit of a different uh, sort of project, sort of mix of smart home DIY and just sort of reviewing a light panel, I guess, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below, both of the video and of these panels and the firmware flashing process. Is this something you do yourself or would you rather just get something that's, you know, okay out of the box? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos somewhat similar to this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other smart home related videos on the end cards. And if you want to check out my own hardware, the open source response time or latency testing tools, those are available at osrtt.com, link in the description too. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.